I think first aid gear is really cool and I actually carry a first aid kit with me everywhere I go with things like a tourniquet and a pressure bandage and those types of items. That's a topic for another day. But when I saw these available on Venture Surplus for $3, I thought it would be really cool to pick one up and do a video on it, comparing it to some items that we have today. This is a first aid field dressing from around the 1960s, and it should be sterilized inside of here. So this is what the box looks like. We'll go over that in just a second. But before we get into what this box says, there's something that we're missing. Normally this is wrapped in plastic, and then there is a piece of paper under the plastic that looks like this. It just tells you what exactly is on here, and contains some of the information that is also on this box. It also says that this is not sterile if the internal package is damaged. So the outside plastic layer is probably just to protect this cardboard box and doesn't actually guarantee sterility. But let's look at what this says. We have a serial number and a lot number telling us what this unit is and that there is one in each box. Dressing, first aid, field, and then the size and dyed sterilized dressing. Then we also see where this was manufactured. So we are to open it at the opposite end. You can see that there is an open here tab right here. Again, this is the same information that was on the front of the box. And then right here we have directions on how to open it. So grass bandages and pull pad open, place pad on the wound with red marked side away from the wound, and tie or pin bandage as, as required. So let's rip this thing open. I wouldn't want to be doing this while somebody was bleeding out in front of me. Okay, that was a bit of a challenge to open. So this thing has been sealed for at least 40 to 50 years, so I would not be surprised if this plastic layer was compromised. If this does still have a sterilized seal, you can tell that it is not vacuum wrapped very tight. You can see that there's plenty of air inside of this wrapper. Just as an example, here is a compressed gauze so you can see what a vacuum seal is supposed to be like. There is almost no air inside of there and if you squeeze it, there is very little give. Whereas with this, if I squeeze it, I get over here, when I squeeze it, you can see there's quite a bit of give, it's not sealed very tightly. All right, let's see what this plastic looks like on the inside. This is not very easy to tear compared to some modern things that we'll look at in a little bit. Okay, that should help. All right. So we actually have one more layer of wrapping inside of paper. All right, now let's get those instructions out to make sure that we open this up the correct way. Okay, looks, those, like some, those look like some safety pins. So the instructions say, grasp bandages and pull pad open. All right, like that. Let me see if I can zoom you out a little bit. Okay, so that should give you a little bit more room. Let me pull the bandages off of all the sides. And let's see, is this the inside? It doesn't have any special color on it or anything. It doesn't look like it does. Okay, so that is what the underside looks like and this is the back side. So we're going to put the other side on the wound. In order to show what it might look like to apply this in a real life situation, I'm going to put it on my leg. Now, of course, if you were actually doing this in an emergency situation or uh, you were in a battle and somebody had gotten shot in the leg, you would want to cut the pant leg off at first so that you can expose the wound. I don't want to show you guys my upper thigh, so I'm just going to apply it like this. So the way that you would do this is you would uh, put the red side up like it said and put the other side down to the wound and then you would want to, and then you would want to tie these long strands. So you'd have to pull them through and then pull them tight. 
So I'm gonna do this on the top of my leg so you can see this part. Like this, you'd pull that through and then you would make a knot. And then you would pull this nice and tight. Now I'm assuming once you got to the setting where somebody would be changing out this bandage, they would probably just cut the knots and you'd be fine. Now you'll notice that if you put the wound in the center right here, there is not any pressure actually on the wound. So they did make these extra long. Part of that is probably so that if you have a wound in the abdomen, they can tie that around there. However, I would also think that one of the reasons that they did that was so that you can cross tie these like so. So you could tie that nice and tight. Okay, it's kind of coming undone on the other side. I didn't tie it very tight because I didn't want to stick to my leg. But you can tie that nice and tight over the wound and then you have pressure right on it. Now if I grab the other side, you could do the same thing over here. And then you have pressure directly on the wound in the situation of major hemorrhaging. So obviously you could tie this a lot tighter. I didn't tie it very tight. One, because I don't really have a good angle on it being where it is on my own leg. But if you were applying this to somebody else, I think you'd be able to tie it tighter. The other reason I didn't tie it very tight was because I'm applying it to my leg and I'm not bleeding. So let's get this off and we'll look at how a modern one works. Now a modern one normally comes sealed like this. This is made from Percy's Medical and they I believe are the supplier for the US military for emergency trauma bandages. You will often hear this called a pressure bandage or an Israeli bandage, um, but either way, this is what it normally looks like while it is packaged before. One thing I like about the packages on these is that in order to open them, you just tear right here. Now, I'm not going to tear this one open. These ones are about $10, and there's plenty of other videos on YouTube where you can see people opening these. But normally what it's going to look like is you tear it open like this, and then there is a plastic wrap on the inside that also has red tabs that you can tear open to get to it quickly. Then it looks something like this. So you can see right here there was elastic and that was going to hold this tight until you ripped it open. Uh, these ones have elastic on them to make sure that it doesn't unravel once you pull it open, but instead it will unravel slowly. So it will have elastic like right here and then if you go a little longer it'll have elastic right here and then it's like that so that you tear elastic each way and it doesn't just come open all the way once you open it up and you're dealing with a whole bunch of length. So the way that this one works is you apply it over the wound. If the wound is right here, we would apply it like that and you want to wrap it tightly. So then you can stretch it like that. And then you'll notice this little applicator right here has teeth on the inside. So you would apply this inside of there And I've used this one a few times. This is my practice one. So it's a little bit worn, so that's just something to note. Um, original ones wouldn't have that wear. So you would pull that tight, and then you would wrap the rest of this around the wound tightly. So one of the things you will notice is that I'm going back and forth. Uh, that's what they say, you wanna cover the entire bandage. All right, and I'll try and get this part on the top where you can see it. Okay, so right here you can see teeth under here and these little clips. What this is for is you are going to put this around the bandage in some different areas, and that will hold it in place. These things stay in place really well. It is not moving off of my leg. So these are the two types of dressing that we have. Let's talk about the pros and cons of both. One of the things that I like about this one is that the actual area with the bandage is quite large. It's 11 and 3 quarters inches by 11 and 3 quarters inches, which means that if you had a really large wound or like a, a burn or a, or a really big road rash, you could apply this whole thing on top of it. And I actually like that. One of the things I also like about this is if you needed to in a pinch, you could just apply a lot of pressure and it's really fluffy and seems like it could absorb quite a bit. However, I agree with the US military that this is the far better method. Although you do have a smaller area in the military, a lot of what you might be dealing with is things like penetrating wounds where something went through somebody, whether that was shrapnel or a bullet or a knife or something else. 
So I don't know if you necessarily need all of that size for most situations, and if you do, you could always apply extra gauze pads and wrap them yourself. One of the other things I like about this is it is much easier to open. With the other one, you would have that outside piece of plastic that I did not have. Then you would have to tear open the cardboard box like I did. After you tore open that cardboard box, you would have the inside paper to unwrap, and then you would have to unwrap the bandage itself. With this one, you have the outside layer of plastic that you have a special pull tab on to tear open, and then you have the inside layer of plastic that also has a special pull tab to tear open. So once you get those two open, you basically have the bandage, and you can just start unwinding it right away and put it on. After you get there and you hold it in place, you can grab it and start wrapping it around. Because it's elastic, you can just tighten it with one hand really easy. Then once you get it fed into the pressure applicator, you just pull in the other direction and wrap it around. I found this one was very, very easy to apply to myself. Now, to be fair, I've also practiced with these a little bit in the past, but I think these would be easier to apply to yourself than the other kind in just about any situation. Also, getting this one to hold in place is really simple. With the other one, you need to tie several knots or safety pin it several times before it will actually stay in place. With this one, after you get it wrapped around, it's as simple as finding a couple places where the clips can attach. This also isn't going to come loose, and I'm not so sure about the other one. I think that would come loose pretty easily. In this particular situation, I am very happy with the US military's innovation. Now, I have a few questions for you guys. Firstly, I'm not an EMT, and although I've practiced with these, I've never actually applied one in an emergency situation. So if you have, I wanna know your experiences and how you have liked the Israeli bandages or the trauma bandages. Also, if you were involved in the Vietnam War or something similar and you've ever used one of these bandages, I would be really interested in knowing your experiences as well. Did you find them adequate at applying a pressure to a wound and slowing bleeding? Or did you think that they left a lot lacking? Did you think that they were easy to apply or did you think that they were difficult? Did you think that it was a fair comparison comparing these two items, or do you think that there is another piece of equipment that should be compared to this type of bandage right here? In any case, I am 8mm Mauser Man, and I applied a 1960s trauma dressing to my leg, and I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Dave John. Dave John.